What's going on everyone and welcome to the channel. For the month of December, I'm going to be posting a whole load of Christmas inspired recipes with this one being a sage and onion stuffing. It's so easy to make and tastes absolutely fantastic. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. All right guys, let's start us off with three medium to large sized brown or yellow onions. And what we want to do with these is slice off the end opposite the root and slice it in half through the root. You guys are then going to guess what I'm about to say, which is that we can then peel off the skin and save the scraps for a stock. We can then make thin slices, stopping just before the root to keep the onion intact. Rotate the onion 90 degrees and slice it in half, again stopping just before the root. Then come through with your knife and dice the onion into medium sized pieces. Make sure to trim off any excess flesh from around the root to avoid any wastage. Save the root for a stock and then what you'll be left with is a nice pile of diced onion. For the next ingredient, grab yourself two large cloves of garlic and with these, slice them nice and thin. If you prefer, you can mince them or give them a rough chop, but slicing them like this only allows for a subtle and not overpowering flavour as we're not breaking down the allicin compound which is what gives garlic its strong pungent flavour. Next, here is 12 large leaves of fresh sage which can be substituted for 2 teaspoons or 2 grams of dried sage leaves. If using fresh, scrunch it up into a nice tight bunch which will make it easier to work with. Then grab a sharp knife and give it a good chop which doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure there's no large leaves. Next, here is 5 grams or 0.1 ounces of flat leaf parsley, which can be substituted for half a teaspoon or half a gram of dried parsley. And with this, we're just going to do the same thing we did with the sage by scrunching it up nice and tight, giving it a rough chop, not being perfect, but making sure there's no large leaves. Now for the last step, this can either be done with a food processor or by hand. Either way, we're going to need 220 grams or 7.7 .7 ounces of fresh white bread with the crusts removed, and if you're doing this by hand, I'll leave the information in the description below this video. Anyway, make sure the food processor's lids lock nice and tight, turn it onto the highest setting, and process the bread to create coarse fresh breadcrumbs. Also, please only use fresh breadcrumbs for this recipe, as dried will ruin the dish. Anyway, once that's done, turn the food processor off, remove the processor bowl from the stand, and either add it into a separate bowl or leave it in the processor bowl to save dishes. Now to cook this, place a large low rimmed pot or pan onto your stovetop over a high heat and add in 100 grams or 3.5 ounces of cubed unsalted butter. Give the butter a quick mix to get it moving and allow it to melt. Once melted and slightly bubbling, add in the diced onions along with one teaspoon or five grams of sea salt flakes and one teaspoon or 10 cracks of black pepper. Give that all a good mix and saute the onions stirring frequently for 5 to 6 minutes or until very lightly golden, translucent and soft. 6 minutes later and the onions are lightly golden and soft, give them another quick mix around before adding in the chopped sage, the chopped parsley, the fresh homemade breadcrumbs, the thinly sliced garlic, half a teaspoon or 2.5 grams of sea salt flakes and another 1 teaspoon or 10 cracks of black pepper. We can then give this a good mix for those flavours to become friends and continue cooking this, stirring it regularly for one minute for the bread to absorb the butter and to very lightly toast, the garlic to very slightly soften and for the herbs to work their magic. Then after one minute we have an aromatic lightly toasted stuffing mix. We can then turn this off the heat and remove it from the stove top. For the next step, brush or wipe half a tablespoon or 7.5 grams of melted unsalted butter into a small to medium sized baking dish, which will not only add more flavour to our stuffing, but it will also prevent it from sticking, reducing the work needed to clean up. We can then add our stuffing mix to the buttered baking dish, making sure to scrape it all in there to avoid any wastage. Spread it all out so it's all sitting flat for even and consistent cooking. Then make your way over to our preheated oven set to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake this for 30 to 35 minutes or until golden brown on top. 30 minutes later and this is looking beautifully golden brown, we can then remove it from the oven being careful of any escaping steam or heat, place it onto a heat resistant surface or dining table with a heat proof cloth underneath and allow it to sit for 5 minutes before we can then dive in with our spoon and serve this delicious stuffing with the rest of our amazing food. Or in other words, we can then dig in. So that's what it takes to make this delicious stuffing that takes less than an hour, only requires a few simple ingredients, and it can be used to stuff a turkey, a chicken, or you can serve it up on its own. 
This recipe here serves six and can easily be doubled, tripled and so on. And to store it, we can place it in the fridge in an airtight container for up to three days, or you can place it in the freezer in an airtight container where it will last up to three months. To reheat it, simply place it back into the oven set to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake it for around 10 to 15 minutes just until it's nice and hot. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I was able to teach you something. If you did, be sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing to see hundreds of more fantastic recipes. Merry Christmas everyone, stay safe and enjoy.